Hey everyone out there, my name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet certified trainer in Tempe, Arizona with Dynamic Worldwide, and this is our last video in our Geo IP address blocking demo. So uh, let's see what we've done so far. Okay, we created the server, the DMZ, the VIP objects, and the rules to make this uh, DMZ work with our web server. We then, in the last video, created the address objects. Oh, excuse me, guys. The address objects for the specific countries. Okay, and then we dropped them in groups based off of what methodology we wanted to uh, to use. Either a whitelist where we'd only allow certain countries resources within our DMZ and block everyone else, or we did an explicit deny and a blacklist. So we picked out countries that we wanted to block. Uh, what if we wanted a combination of both of them? Now we could actually do that because, in reality, you might have more things that you want to protect in your DMZ than the simplistic oh, example that we did here in class. Sorry guys, it's getting late. <laughs> so uh, let's just let's just make things more complicated. Let's try to get this thing to, to break. Let's push it to the limit. So I'm going to add an additional server here just to to shake things up a bit. And I'm going to rely on, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to use a virtual PC. All right, I'll drop it in there because that has a really easy way of configuring configuring an IP address. All right, we'll just call this server X, whatever. Okay, and uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll plug it in our DMZ. All right, there we go, and we'll turn it on. So our whole point of this is to to try to make a more complex DMZ because there is a rule that we normally have to put in our in our uh, DMZ rules oh excuse me guys oh stretching too much anyways and uh, that was true in the older versions and it's kinda hard to explain unless we just kinda do it so just uh, hold on tight there so here we go let's go ahead and yep it's already booted up so let's go ahead and set an IP address for this so we'll say IP uh, 10 nope we didn't use 10 did we it was 172.16 dot um, one dot two with a slash 32 no 24 geez and the default gateway of the 40 gate is going to be 172 uh, 16 one two five four all right there we go now if you guys remember we do have a DMZ going on here so it can't reach out to the internet but I did leave ping accessed on the 48 um, interface there so we can test it for connectivity reasons. So let's go ahead and ping that gateway just to see that we can talk to the 48. All right, 254, and there it is. All right, so good times there. It's configured. So let's go ahead and set this up in the DMZ. So uh, let's go to our local PC here. All right, now in the last example, we had an all here and a blacklist, okay? And we put Devina in there or whatever it was in Russia as our deny and let everyone else else through. But this time, oh, excuse me, guys. Let's go ahead and uh, do a virtual IP address for that server X that we just created. So here we go. And we will call this server X. Server X. All right. So uh, we'll just say it's bound to our LAN 1 or WAN 1. And it has an external IP address of 10, 200 at 1, uh, 150, because the other one was, what, 100? So, and it's really pointing to 172, 16, 1, 2, okay? All right, so we have the VIP object. Now let's go ahead and make the, uh, the uh, DMZ rule. So let's go to IP4 policy. There's our DMZ pair. And now we're going to create a new rule. Okay. And we're going to say server X. All right. Incoming from WAN. There we go. Outgoing is our DMZ, our source. The internet's a big place. So for right now, we're just going to say all. Destination is going to be our server X. And, you know, normally it would be, what, FTP, HTTPS, whatever. Here it's just going to be all ICMP. So, 
that's the only thing we're going to allow through and that is turned off so here we go so we're going to hit OK so a couple of things here so we have our blacklist pointed to the web server but we don't have it to server X okay and we do have a blacklist approach here so we'd probably want to put in all ICMP and also our VIP object here and that would actually technically work so but let's just test this out and just see if it works in general and because the firewall rules are top down we should be able to ping server X from both uh, our make-believe country here and our random PC out on the internet so um, here we go let's try out that VIP object and make sure that it is working all right come on terminal there we go so ping 10.200.1. what did I say 150 all right there it is there's server X okay so we got there from Devina or whatever and uh, yeah and then we should be able to get it from the random PC too so we'll we'll try that out next so here we go so here's the terminal all right I don't know why I have to click that twice all right ping 10.200.1.150 and there you go there's server X so we as admins will go you know what we are just gonna create a blanketed deny list at the very top because of the complexity of our DMZ rules and so you know instead of the web server we're just gonna say hey you know what everything that's going into the DMZ right we don't care where they're going in the DMZ these countries are blocked and you know what not just for HTTPS but for everything right so so now I should not be able to ping from Devina I shouldn't be able to get to the web from Devina okay uh, but I should still be able to get to it from my uh, my random PC okay so this is an example of an explicit deny at the very top see how we're set to deny and because those two countries are listed it should it should block them so let's let's see what's going on there all right so here we go let's go to our remote PC okay and make sure that it's oh what the heck oh my gosh my my web page got through what what's going on here all right let's go to library let's go to history you know what maybe it's just cached so let's go ahead and clear now okay and uh, try that again applications Firefox all right now remember Devina our make-believe country along with Russia was at that very top block all list so they should not be getting through all right and they are okay uh, I bet you the same thing is happening with with the ping so if we go to terminal here and I ping this it's it's getting through so what is going on here guys what's happening and this happens a lot in the FortiGate world so that's why I'm taking the time to explain this so the way that the DMZ rules work with the VIP objects is let me get back to my my FortiGate here all right is that if there's a VIP object in use in the firewall policies in a DMZ pair okay it only evaluates starting with the VIP object down it's only going to evaluate those with VIP objects period okay if a firewall rule does not have a VIP object assigned to it it does not get processed it's just the way that the FortiGate works okay so a lot of people will try to block country codes like this alright just like we did okay and it just simply doesn't work and they get frustrated well the reason why is if you're gonna have this kind of level of access okay you need to be able to open this bad boy up and instead of actually nope I lied you're gonna have to add uh, an additional rule and it's only available through the CLI and it's called a match VIP enable and when you do a firewall policy with match VIP enabled it gets processed along with the VIP objects even if there's no VIP objects being used alright so let's right click into here and I love this little quick edit see how we can edit right into the CLI 
from the GUI takes us right to our firewall rule all right and we're gonna type in a are you ready set match vip enable and then commit and that's all in theory we should have to do to suddenly block anyone in our blacklist okay so let's give it a shot okay all right so let's go back to our Devina PC and let's clear out this cache for our control meaning like you know to make sure it's not just being buffered or cached or whatever so let's clear it all out let's close it out and now it should hit that top rule that we set match vip object to true all right so let's go to 10.200.1.100 and they are not getting there nowhere where you going nowhere so yeah so why did this now work where it didn't work before because we told it to process that firewall policy within our DMZ pair as if there was a VIP object being used so once again guys if you are going to use a, a rule within your DMZ that does not have a VIP object assigned to it and a VIP is how we do DNATing in the FortiGate world. You have to do a set match VIP enabled on every firewall policy with that one so it gets evaluated with the pair. All right. Let's see if it blocks the ping access to server X. Okay. Yeah, nothing. Because it's hitting that first rule. All right, guys. So there you go. So it looks like. With uh, 40 OS 6.2, you still need to enable the VIP object rule. But what's nice about this is that it does allow us to have a blanketed approach. I'm sorry, guys, my voice is going out. <clears throat> so without that set match rule, it would not be able to be processed. So, okay, I'm going to hit pause for a second and get a drink of water. I'm sorry, guys. All right, sorry about that, guys. I was like, my voice went out. So, yeah, so there you guys go. Uh, if you watch all of these in order, there's three videos here. You should be able to see how to successfully block or allow IP addresses to a DMZ out external resources using the Geo database from the FortiGate, okay? And then this video particularly, we saw if we are using firewall rules in our DMZ pair, all right, uh, our interface pairs, that are not referring to a VIP object, yeah, you have to put in the VIP match rule. And you know what I just realized? We didn't really test if we still had connectivity, though. From this guy, yeah, we're fine. I knew it was going to work. I'm just kind of, like, cocky like that. Let's see our ping works. Yeah, like a champ. All right, I wasn't worried. I promise. So, anyways, I hope uh, you found that helpful. So, like I said, I record these videos for my students. I am not a YouTuber, and I actually do not do this... Uh, do this um, video YouTube channel for anything other than demoing for my classroom um, so that's why I don't edit them or anything like that and it kind of stinks but you know what if someone finds it helpful out there I'm glad um, for the person that I recorded this to I'll make sure to send you the link here shortly and uh, please let me know if you have any questions so I can um, clear things up so all right guys until next time